Hi, I'm Claire Lauer. I write for ExoJane. I have been for about three years now. Um, I primarily write about food and beverage, though sometimes I write about music, and sometimes I tell you embarrassing personal details from my life. But today we're going to focus on food. Um, we're going to be making fromage fort, which if you've never heard of, it's just like a really good way to get rid of, well, get rid of sounds harsh, a really good way to use any extra bits of cheese or like the last quarter cup of wine if you're the type of person who ever has leftover wine or cheese. Um, I'm not really, so I had to go buy some cheese for this, but luckily, of cheese. Um, while we're waiting for people to tune in and stuff, um, I guess I'll just, this is my kitchen, it's kind of small. Um, all you really are going to need, the only equipment you'll need to make fromage for today is a uh, food processor, is what, the, is what this is called. Um, you kind of can't really make fromage for it without one because you have to obliterate cheese into a homogenous sort of spread. Um, other than that, there are no, there's no real recipe for it. It's just kind of whatever you have lying around. You can find recipes online, but I feel like that's very, um, it's anti the entire spirit of fromage for it, which is just like winging it. So I may talk about some ratios. I don't really measure a lot. Um, we'll just kind of make it up as we go along. There's a lot of tasting, a lot of tweaking, stuff like that. Um, I just dive right into it and wait a little longer. What time are we at? Do you know? Can you tell what time it is? That was probably like one minute of me talking. And then, um, while I'm waiting, um, oh, you guys need to meet Angie real quick. Hold on. If you hear little toenails walking around, little click clicks, that's probably Angie, which you may have seen her in some posts before. She's going to be my assistant today, and by assistant, I just mean she's going to eat pieces of cheese that I drop on the floor, which will be many. So big day for Angie. Um, let me wash my hands, because after you touch dogs, you should wash your hands before handling food. <laughs> All right, oh, and as I do this, feel free to type in questions in the comment box or whatever. I don't, I don't, I've never done this before, and hopefully Chris will see them and read them to me, and I will respond. Um, try to remain on topic. Cheese, wine, fromage, pork, the like, but if you have another food question, feel free to do that. Uh, so first of all, cheese. I probably should have cleaned out my fridge before doing this, but I did not. So um, if you're the type of person who likes to see what's in other people's fridges, mine is a particularly disgusting example. We have some old tag out that Chris here actually left like a week ago, and I still haven't thrown that away. Um, lots of condiments, got some wasabi mayonnaise, some beer, some grenadine, some ginger beer, some cocktail cherries, expired heavy cream, the basics. Um, duck eggs, which is kind of fancy. Expired Diet Coke, also didn't know they expired, but they do. I'm still going to drink them. As far as cheese goes, um, we'll pretend that these are little leftovers from like a fancy cheese party I had. <clears throat> Take them out and let's see what we got here. Quite a few. All right, so I have one that just says Hannah. Portland, Oregon. Don't really know what that is, but it appears to be like a hard Parmesan like cheese. Got a Gouda from Holland. Got St. Angel from France. St. Angel, excuse me. Um, it's a cow's milk cheese. It's soft. That's all I know about it. <clears throat> I don't even know how to pronounce this. I don't know if you can zoom in on that for the people at home. Who knows? Who knows what that is? Um, a Rosemary Asiago from Wisconsin. Shout out to Wisconsin. I grabbed a pack of Philadelphia cream cheese because why not? It adds great texture and creaminess and mouthfeel and all that crap. Um, a raw milk shark cheddar and 
a truffle cheddar, which I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna taste this before throwing that in there because truffle is one of those things that can just overwhelm the entire whatever the heck you're making. Um, <clears throat> we'll also be drinking wine throughout this whole thing because this is making me nervous to be honest. So first of all, what you're gonna do is unwrap your hard cheeses. Do those first, and there's a very specific reason why. It does have a rind. Oh, it's kind of hard. I may have gotten too many hard cheeses, but that's okay because we're also going to use butter, and that'll really help with texture and stuff. This one actually has a little mold on it, which is fun. But I think that's... <clears throat> yeah, it has a couple little spots of mold on it. It's okay, we'll scrape it off. And then that truffle cheddar that I was talking about. Oh cool, I only bought one soft cheese. But you know what, that's life. Sometimes you only have one soft cheese and it'll be okay anyway because we're going to be adding, like I said, butter and other liquids. Let's have a little piece of this. Mm -hmm. it's, well, it's pretty truffly. I don't know if we're going to eat it that. And then Gouda. All right. So first of all, you're going to like peel off the rinds of any of these hard cheeses. Are there any questions yet? Probably not, right? It's yeah. pretty straightforward so far. Um, scrape off mold, because that's not really good for you, I guess. <clears throat> Do -do -do. Um, Another little tip, don't throw away rinds because you can actually save them and then throw them into broth to help flavor broth. If you make your own stock or broth. Mm -hmm. And you just want to cut them up into sizes that are small enough that they'll fit down this little tube of your food processor. Food processor. That doesn't have a rind. I don't know if this, I don't think this has a rind either. This looks like it's just covered in rosemary. With full flavor, are from Rushford. Okay, <clears throat> so that's all good. See so what you want to do. Take the grating attachment of your food processor. Get that down in there. Take a sip of wine. Obviously the wine is optional, but I recommend it. And then turn this thing on. Oh, there it goes. All right, and you just start dropping cheese. trust it not to completely hijack the entire fromage for experience. <clears throat> All right. Then you do that and then just to get, let's see if I can just wedge this back in here. Put your blade back in here. All right, now the fun part. Um, first of all, let's add our only lonely soft cheese. is a real struggle. Okay, there we go. And again, you'll notice I'm not really measuring. I think 
when Alton Brown and his fromage fart recipe, he does like a pound of cheese to a quarter cup of lime. This is probably around there. I could have measured it, but I didn't because you don't always have exact control over the amount of cheese in your house. Um, this is very soft, even straight out of the fridge. So we'll just cut it over. Okay. Oh. <laughs> this is nice and really, really messy. Plop. That's a, good, that's a good sound effect. It's a really appealing sound effect. Um, there's more in there. <clears throat> Sorry, I keep clearing my throat. The allergy season in Portland is no freaking joke. Okay, I'm done. I'm done with this nonsense. Just get in there. Oh my god. Come on. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna wash my hands off again real quick. All right, the next thing, oh, I already moved the butter. Great, the butter's over here. We're gonna want a couple tablespoons of butter. This is actually like eight tablespoons, so it's not gonna look like I'm taking it that much, but I am. Room temperature works best for this. But I'm of the opinion that your butter should always be room temperature anyway. There's so much fat in it, it's not really gonna do anything too terrible to leave it out for a while. All right. Oh, the cream cheese. Almost forgot. Oh, here comes Ann. Nope. I thought Angie was coming. She's not. She's going to hide under the table. But pretty soon she'll start sniffing around for cheese. Oh my God. Why am I? <laughs> As I grabbed that knife, I was like, wouldn't it be hilarious if I cut myself live on Facebook? I don't think anyone would be very happy with that. All right, <clears throat> got the cream cheese in there. Now let's just, oh, see I got cream cheese on the floor. Angie will be getting that very soon. So now before we add our other stuff, just kind of pulse. give you kind of an idea of like the texture that you're starting out with so if you want to like so that's already pretty spreadable but we're gonna make it even more spreadable are there any comments left there's no such thing as leftover wine in my crib yes no I know I said that you may have to buy some wine all right that's good <clears throat> um speaking of wine now we have to choose the wine Things that I have open, I have vermouth open. All right, don't worry, I'll wash my hands. I have vermouth open, which could be weird. I'm gonna take a swig of that and see what that tastes like. I think this is too fruity. Yeah, you don't wanna use that for this. Um, let's choose it. You want something kind of dry. This is a sherry. That'll do. Other options. Do you hear my dog making those sounds? It's okay. It's like a reverse sneezing thing. She does it a lot. If it continues though, I may have to step off screen and help her real quick. Um, I also have some canned wine that I could use, like a Sauvignon, or this is a Pinot Grigio. Pinot Grigio would be okay. Sauvignon Blanc would be okay. You just want something not too sweet, something that would go well with cheese. Um, so we're gonna use the sherry, because I have it already open. I don't want to open a whole bottle of wine. <coughs> All right. Oh, speaking of wine, I'm out of it. So I'm going to get it. Oh, look, there's plastic. That won't work. Let's get that out. <laughs> Don't worry, no plastic made it into the final product. So, Corey, uh, Corey Holmes would like to know if you could use a dry cider. You could, yeah. I mean, the great thing about, about this product is there really are no rules. Whatever you think will taste good, um, 
will probably be great. Dry cider would be cool, especially like if you're doing a very cheddar heavy fromage for it, like those apple notes. I think that's a great idea. I think the apple-y dry cider would be fantastic in this. Yes, good idea. Who is it? Corey Holmes? Yes. Thank you. That was a great question. Um, Let me just look here. Buddy. Also, I've used red wine for fromage for it before, um, and that that was also very good. I promise I'll wash my hands after looking at the cream juice off my finger. Yes, <coughs> Are you getting shots of Angie? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, let's just, I just like to eyeball it. Wug, wug, wug. You can always add more later. I'm actually going to get a spatula and kind of mash some of that down. <clears throat> do, do, do. Yeah, that, that butter or cream cheese? That's butter. I should have. Okay, so here's a learning, a learning experience tip. Cut the butter up into smaller pieces um, than I did. Don't just throw a huge chunk of butter in there. Break it up a bit first. All right. Now again. Oh, and another thing we should add that I prepared ahead of time, like a real cooking show type of thing, is this garlic over here. This is actually, I just, I'm obsessed with this, recently obsessed with this tip. Instead of like roasting garlic for 50 minutes in the oven, you can just take a dry cast iron pan and put a few unpeeled cloves in there and just heat it over medium heat until they get nice and black like this. And then you'll have soft kind of roasted garlic. It's not going to be as... Um, sweet and creamy as like traditionally roast, roasting it in the oven will be, but it will take that edge off and it will make it, um, you know, softer and easier to spread. So I'm just gonna add a couple of these to our fromage for here. Let's move back over there. Boop. Julia Shaw has a question. Oh, is Ju hi Julia. She said, I can't really see how much you eyeballed it. Okay. Is the food processor filled with like a quarter inch with wine, less or more? Uh, well, at this point, you can't really see. I would say I, I, bought, I poured like one, two, three count. So let's see what that is actually. <clears throat> Pretty much exactly two ounces. Um, so that's how much is in there right now. We'll blend that around and see where that, where that leaves us. Right, let's get a little tasting spoon. I should have had out already because these drawers are kind of old. So that's a fairly that's a fairly thick fromage fort. Mmm. It's a very good fromage fort. But we can do more wine. So or sherry in this pick, was it? Yeah, sherry. So you know what? We'll just add two more ounces. Mm -hmm. And if this gets too liquidy, I'll add more cheese. I have some cheddar. Kind of the texture that I go for, that right there. Um, oh, you taste again. It's still pretty thick and spreadable. Yeah. So I can definitely taste the sherry in this. If you don't, 
if you don't want to feel like you're eating alcohol, which I understand, um, maybe do a little less, maybe just do like a total of three ounces. Um, but I like the flavor it adds and I feel like it's, yeah, quarter cup is pretty standard for a pound of cheese, which is what we have right now. Um, but again, adjust it to fit your preference. Again, I'm going to wash my hands and put it in my mouth. I mean, I'm the only one that's going to eat this, so it really doesn't matter. But, good practices. We're going to leave that truffle cheese out because I don't want it hijacking everything. Other things, let's see, I wonder what else. Ooh, mustard would actually be really good. I like putting a little bit of mustard. Oh, God, I've ruined everything, though, by taking this out. It isn't. It's fine. <clears throat> oh, God, yeah, I know. It could use more garlic even. I wouldn't mind maybe another clove of garlic and let's do a little bit of Dijon mustard. And you know what? Maybe some Worcestershire. This is really whatever you want it to be, but these are the flavors I like. Um, I would just do, I don't know, a squirt, like a teaspoon. A couple dashes of this for that umami that you get from the anchovies. And let's just blend again real quick. I have no idea what time it is. I don't know how, I, this could be 10 minutes. We could be fucking 30 minutes in. I have no sense of time right now. Um, and I'll taste one more time. That's delightful. Okay, so now what do you do with it? You can do pretty much anything with it. You can just eat it with a spoon like I've been doing, like a garbage person. Um, you could get some chips, get these chips, which are some of my favorites, the sea salt and pepper, and that's nice, and just dip that in there. Or, and I probably should have prepared better for this. You can actually broil this, like spread some on a good bread and broil it and it gets all bubbly and delicious. Actually, let's do that right now, unless it's like, I don't know what time it is. <clears throat> let's see. Now you can see my really weird tiny oven. It doesn't fit anything. I actually had to get a smaller baking pan because my regular baking pan, actually, let's leave this here. My regular baking pan was too big and a bunch of grease like dripped off of it because it was tilted and then there was a fire. Chris was actually here before there was a fire. It was smoky, fire alarm went off. I'd only been here for like a week, it was mortifying. Um, let's get everything out of here. I've already made such a mess. I'm gonna eat this chip. We have a question. Oh, from whom? From Amanda Bloom. Oh, hey. What's up, Amanda? She said, where would one get random small pieces of cheese if they don't just regularly host cheese parties? This is a great question. Um, if you live in Portland, New Seasons always oh, has like a basket of them. Or I guess anywhere with the New Seasons. Hold oh, on a second, I feel very rude chewing and talking. But really any, um, any cheese counter will cut tiny pieces of any cheese for you if you ask them. You just have to ask them. Cheese people are usually very nice and accommodating. How, what more are the weights on these? So these were around like a tenth of a pound. So, and you can ask, just say like, I want a tenth of a pound of this, I want a tenth of a pound of this. And uh, yeah, and they'll cut them up for you. Um, and if they don't, then find a different grocery store because that's, there's no reason they can't do that. What was I doing? Oh yeah, right. A nice crusty bread. And I like to just make like kind of a French bread pizza situation, except for it's not pizza. No, it's not pizza. When you just get a knife, I guess I can use one of the many knives that I've already gotten messy. Spread it on. 
This is like the, this is a, dis God, this is a terrible cooking show in terms of like neatness and, but this is, I mean, this is, the, you're, you're seeing the behind the scenes thing. Like whenever I do recipe of the week, it is such a disaster. Every week, <laughs> you should have seen the birthday cake shake yesterday. There were sprinkles and melted ice cream and vodka everywhere, just everywhere. I don't even know how I do it, but. Don't worry, Angie didn't eat any of the vodka. She didn't get any spilled vodka. She may have gotten a sprinkle, but she's okay. Then pop it under the broiler. And hopefully this doesn't take a million years. I should have already had it preheating, but I didn't because foresight is not my strong suit. Do we have any other questions, comments, anything? Insults? If there are any insults, I would like to address them. <laughs> are there? <laughs> really? That's impressive for the internet. Good job, internet. What do you think? Other things you can do with fromage fort? Oh, I have made pasta and just tossed it in with some fresh pasta with a little pasta water. That works really well. Um, obviously crackers, chips, any carb. Any carb will do. Ooh, mashed potatoes. Stir it into mashed potatoes. You can stir it into a deviled egg filling. That would be really good. What else have I done with fromage for it? Um, I think that's pretty much it. Sometimes I season it with salt, but if you have like a really salty cheese, there's no reason to do that because it'll just end up being gross. It's all just a matter of sort of tasting as you go along and uh, adjusting it to suit your needs. Um, it's rosé season, so why not make a rosé fromage for it? That could be fun. I've made it, I've actually made it with this Pinot, which was a fun purpley fromage for it. Oh, I meant to put more garlic in it. Damn it. Oh, well. We'll do that another time. If it, what? Is there something? No. If anyone has any other food questions that are not from Oshport related, I'll talk to them now. Or if you want to talk about recipe of the week, suggest any topics, now's a good time to do that. I'm going to check on this. I don't know what time it is. Oh, see? Okay, it's already... Here, show them in there. Show them inside my disgusting oven. It's already getting really melty, like almost fondue-like. Um, so keep an eye on Oh, hey, Danielle. Hi, Danielle Rutherford. I see your comment. What can't you do with fromage for it? That's a great question. Um, I wouldn't put it on ice cream. Here, I should close this, actually, instead of wasting all of my energy, because I do have to pay for electricity. Shout out to Danielle. She actually bought me this apron, so that's very nice. I appreciate her in the comments today. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to check the time real quick, just because I have no idea what's going on. I don't want to, like... Thank you forever.